Hello, uh, welcome to our second talk on artificial intelligence. Today we will talk on neural networks and deep learning. So the agenda of today is first the positioning of deep learning, also in relation uh, with uh, machine learning. Then we will have a look on the core idea of uh, neural networks and deep learning. And uh, we then will investigate how neural networks and deep learning uh, really learn, how they do this acquisition of uh, knowledge. To conclude our lesson today, um, I will give a short outlook uh, on uh, new developments uh, in neural networks and uh, give a conclusion. The history of neural networks uh, is a very long one. Here you can see that even in the 1940s there were first ideas and the same as the classical artificial intelligence, neural networks had their ups and downs. There were phases when people were very enthusiastic about neural networks and there were also kinds of neural network winters uh, when investigated uh, was very low. So why is deep learning now successful? Why has it uh, become such a hot topic uh, today? So first uh, there's the development of hardware. Uh, graphical processing units uh, are well developed. Uh, for example, uh, Titan X has approximately six teraflops uh, that's far beyond uh, the capacities of a uh, supercomputing center of the 1990s. Then uh, we have uh, huge uh, advances in the area of data sets and benchmarks. Uh, there is a large number of data sets available uh, and they initiated uh, the development uh, of algorithms uh, because uh, there is an open exchange between the researchers. So the fragmented uh, and uh, split it up uh, research uh, landscape of the 1990s now works closely together. And uh, due to these advances in hardware and uh, data sets, there's a huge uh, progress in algorithms. So we have uh, very good activations functions, the weight initialization is much better than before and uh, we have very advanced optimization functions. At this point, uh, probably uh, there's the question, where is the difference between machine learning uh, that uh, we learned in the last session and deep learning? So, um, in general, machine learning works with much lesser data. So. Uh, for example, uh, for machine learning, we have sample sites only of, uh, we have sample sizes of 100 or uh, up to 10,000 uh, entries. However, with deep learning, there's 1 million. And also, the relationship between uh, trained samples and uh, test samples uh, is quite different. So, uh, for deep learning, due to the high number of training um, data, we only need a very small uh, percentage uh, of test samples. So um, the idea is to not uh, write down a symbolic uh, representation of knowledge, but instead to develop uh, infrastructure that is able to learn. And how is it doing? Neural networks abstract uh, the learning process uh, by assuming that we have a number of inputs and these inputs influence uh, a certain output. And uh, the strength of this influence uh, is represented by so-called weights. So for each input uh, we have a weight which defines how strong this input uh, influences the later outcome. And uh, in the transfer function, which is uh, visible below, we see that all these inputs with their weights are added on, 
uh, we see that all these uh, inputs uh, with their weights are, are summed up and we add uh, also a little of bias to it and then the result is handed over to an activation function uh, that uh, translates uh, the result of the transfer function into an uh, output that is further propagated uh, within the network. For example, we took the estimating of real estate prices. So if you look for an apartment, for example, there are a number of factors influencing uh, the estimated price. Uh, that may be the size of the apartment, how many rooms it has, where it is located and uh, what is situated in the environment. And uh, the estimated price is, um, and these factors um, are weighted uh, and finally determine the estimated price. This leads to a basic architecture uh, of this problem. So we have a number of inputs here from x1 uh, to x8 and uh, they, are, they are fed into the neural network and uh, we also add the weights that uh, determine how strong these inputs uh, influence uh, the transfer function. And uh, the result of this layer one is further propagated to layer two, where we finally uh, get a prediction. Here we see an abstract uh, architecture of a neural network. We now associate uh, the parts of the real estate uh, um, price uh, prediction uh, with this basic architectures. So we have a number of inputs uh, as uh, the sites, the number of rooms and so on, and they are fed into the first layer. Um, the strength of this uh, input is determined uh, by the weights um, uh, that are provided. And um, after calculating the result uh, from layer one, it is propagated uh, to layer two, again uh, based on weights uh, that uh, are predefined. The important thing uh, here is that there is no prioritization before the learning process. So uh, we simply take all the inputs uh, um, at the same priority. Uh, this is in uh, opposition to machine learning. In machine learning, we would try to identify one of these inputs uh, as uh, especially important and then to prioritize the input uh, from it. Okay, now why is it called deep learning? Yes, because we are not only have one or two layers, but there are maybe many layers. So here there are eight layers and uh, this may even continue to 10, 20 or even more layers. And uh, this also explains why the idea of deep learning um, couldn't be successful in the 1980s and 1990s. Um, the calculation effort uh, for all these uh, layers uh, was simply much too high. Let's have a look uh, how we do learning with a um, neural network and deep learning. So it's a learning by example. That means we provide training data with the inputs uh, here on the left. And there is also this target value. That means uh, we take data from real estate uh, objects uh, with their description. That means the size, uh, the location, the number of rooms and so on. And uh, we also record uh, the estimated price. And uh, then we uh, fed, uh, then we feed all these inputs uh, into uh, the network. Uh, the network processes it and uh, delivers a prediction. What we do then is that we compare uh, this prediction with the target value. 
um, as uh, I already told, we in our training data are the inputs and the target value. That means the uh, real price of the real estate object. And by comparing the target value with the prediction, uh, we get an error and we try uh, to minimize this error uh, through an optimizer. That means this optimizer looks at the error and then tries to adapt the weights in a way that the error is minimized. So how it is done? And uh, a very important uh, means in this context is what is called gradient de descent. That means uh, this optimizer tries to find the direction to optimize the result in order to minimize the error. That can be compared to the situation that you are uh, on a hill and you try to get down somehow uh, to minimize the error. And uh, you can do this in different uh, fast steps. And that is represented by the learning rate. That means if you have a high learning rate, you step down very quickly. Uh, if you have a low learning rate, you step down in smaller steps. And you repeat um, this procedure until you assume that the minimum is reached. The learning success hmm, is not guaranteed. There are, basically, there are three situations. First, there is uh, the so-called underfitting. That means we have not learned enough. Uh, we see here the goal was to separate uh, the green uh, from the blue dots and this line does not very, that line does not work very well. Um, to cope with underfitting, we have either um, to create a larger network, that means to add uh, additional uh, layers and input neurons, and uh, the other possibility is to train longer. Then, of course, everything can be fine. Look, uh, Please uh, pay attention to this one green dot uh, beyond the line. We will see that it is not advisable to really uh, create a perfect solution because this would lead to overfitting. That means um, the neural network perfectly separates uh, the training set. The problem with this oversituating situation is that uh, in its core, the neural network memorizes the training set, but in reality, uh, the data are different uh, and uh, overfitting um, can be described as perfect results with the training data, but bad results with the real data because the real data have another distribution and uh, have other properties uh, than the training data. These are the three situations and uh, most of the effort in deep learning training processes is to achieve a situation uh, in the middle and to avoid underfitting and overfitting. Strategies to further optimize uh, the training is the normalization of training data. How can we describe it? Take this training data on the left. It's not normalized. That means uh, the dots are somehow uh, 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 in this diagram. So the first step is that we try to center it. That means uh, uh, that we put it in the middle of this diagram and then we uh, try to change the variance um, of the data in a way uh, that um, the points have nearly the same distance uh, from the center of the diagram. The effect is as follows. So the normalization um, reduces the learning path um, uh, drastically. So on the left we can see 
that there are a lot of zigzags that are in learning uh, from this non-normalized data. But if we use normalized data, um, we have a much more straightforward uh, learning path. I will give a short outlook. So the development uh, hasn't stopped with this uh, simple model. Instead, we observe an increase of um, deep learning architecture for special tasks. That means uh, special networks, that means networks with special architectures have been developed uh, for specific tasks. For example, there are convolutional networks uh, that are used for image detection, there are recurrent neural networks uh, that are used for time series prediction and also for translation. And very successfully uh, today are transformer networks that do neural language uh, processing. Okay, now let's come to our conclusion. So deep learning uses the adaption uh, of weights to learn from training data. So we don't have any explicit uh, data. Instead, we fed, instead we feed in uh, the training data. And uh, contrary to the old machine learning, we do not even prioritize the inputs. Instead, we simply uh, put in the data and then we adapt our learning algorithms to improve the result. Uh, there are some um, possible outcomes and we saw there is underfitting the, uh, and overfitting, uh, which, uh, what is often uh, overseen. Uh, that means uh, the neural network is learning too well the training data but performs worse, but performs bad with real data. And finally, we had a short look on specialized deep learning architectures for specific tasks. Thank you very much.